This is episode number 50 of the Homestead Journey podcast. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here on the Homestead Journey. My name is Brian Wells. I am coming to you from 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. So the reason why things might sound a little different today is because I am outdoors shooting this with some video. And the reason is that I had a listener reach out to me this week on our Facebook page and ask me some questions about pig housing. And initially I was just going to take some pictures and maybe shoot some video and it's and send it to him. But then I got to thinking that might make a great topic of conversation for the podcast. And in fact, I'm splitting his question up into two episodes. This week, we're going to be talking about pig housing. And next week, we're going to be talking about pig fencing. But before we jump into all of that, let's jump into this week's Homestead Happenings. And I will bring you up to date with everything that we've been doing here on 3B Farm and Homestead. Now, to be honest with you, here on the homestead this week, I have not really done a whole heck of a lot homesteading related. In part, it's just because it's that time of the year where everything is just really starting to slow down for us. Uh, As I said last week, with regards to the garden, I'm done. And so what we did this week is actually move the mobile coop up here to the root stout bed. And so we have the chickens put to work as they're kind of picking through the leftovers here in the roost out bed. Oh my goodness. And uh, they're picking through the leftovers of what's here in the roost out bed, scratching things around and prepping this bed for next spring. So that was one of the things that we did. It was kind of a bit of an adventure getting this moved. In fact, I'll throw a couple of pictures of what I had to do to get this moved because, well, One of the tires was flat and coming off the rim, and so it made for a little bit of an entertaining evening, shall we say. And then by the time we got everything squared away and I got everything moved up here, we had to chase chickens all through the brush where they were at to try to catch them and had to move them up here one by one. But it has been a lot of fun this week watching them scratch around here in the the hay and picking at things and they just really really have been much happier here than where they were located previously we got way too many roosters i gotta do something about that i'm gonna do something about that next weekend the other thing that i did this week is something that i absolutely hate i am not someone who enjoys turning wrenches i i just don't like doing it but it was time for the 50 hour service on our coyote ck 3510 se and so i went ahead and did that let me tell you something folks it was i had been dreading it and it was worse than i had imagined i don't know i I, my guess is is that the person who put the oil filter on was really they'd eaten their wheaties shall we say (laughs) i struggled to get that oil filter off and it's not that the oil filter is really located in a bad place it's not but it was just on there so tight, I ended up breaking two oil filter wrenches. I skinned my knuckles and bent a screwdriver trying to get that thing off. What I figured was going to take me about an hour to do, took me about five hours and four trips to tractor supply and local hardware stores. It was just absolutely, it was it was brutal, it sucked. And then to make matters worse, my buddy Rob, um, who has a Kubota, it was time for him to do his 50-hour service this weekend. And he sent me a text this morning and said, oh, by the way, it took me 30 minutes to do that. You're a jerk, Rob. You're a big jerk. <laughs> no, but at least it's done. And I saved myself a ton of money by doing it myself instead of having my dealer do it. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not very happy with my dealer to begin with. And then what they quoted, it was just insane. Uh, just for the parts alone was crazy. Um, so anyhow, I went and did it myself, got it done and uh, involved an oil change, two filter changes, checking some fluid levels and, uh, getting actually had a mouse nest in the front end of this that I had to suck out. So that really was, uh, that really sucked, but I'm glad I found it, got it done. And uh, so that really was it on the homestead this week. The two big things was moving the chickens and doing the, uh, the oil change. Other than that, this week was a busy week. 
I was just off off the homestead getting involved in some other things that uh, I'm involved in and really enjoyed it and uh, also went and spent uh, an evening on Friday working with a friend on his garage that he's building so not a lot of stuff going on here on 3B Farm and Homestead gonna be a lot of stuff coming up this week um, and so next week Homestead Happenings probably will be a little bit more involved all right let's jump on over to this week's charting the course and we're going to talk about pig shelters. So as I said, I had a listener. You want to talk? This is one of our sows. This is actually Betswine Ross uh, that's chatting with me right now. I had a listener reach out to me this week and ask me some questions with regards to the types of pig shelters that we use here on 3B Farm and Homestead. Before we talk specifically about the different types of shelters we use, I thought that it would be helpful to think about some of the things that you should consider on your homestead when you are building shelters for your pigs. The first thing that you are going to want to think about is the size and type of pig that you are planning on raising. You see, what might work for an American guinea hog, which is what we raise here on 3B Farm and Homestead, may not work very well for, let's say, a 700 or 800 pound of the you know, sour or boar of the pink pig variety. And so thinking about the type of pig and the size of those pigs is going to be very crucial when you are thinking about the style of housing that you're going to build. The second thing that you're going to want to think about is the quantity of pigs that you're going to be keeping in that area. There are certain types of housing that might work well for one or two pigs, but it's not going to scale very well. And an example of that would be an IBC tote. Uh, Al Lumna over at Lumna Acres for several years raised his pigs using IBC totes as the housing. He had a couple of feeder pigs and he would put hay or straw in it and it worked out very, very well, even during the winter time. However, if you're going to keep maybe eight or 10 pigs in the same area, then that's not gonna scale very well. Number one, it's gonna get very costly buying all of those IBC totes. But the other thing is that invariably what's going to happen is all of the pigs are going to try to fit in the same tote. It's just going to happen. And so potentially what could happen is you would end up with a pig getting crushed at the bottom of a pig pile with all eight pigs or 10 pigs trying to fit into the same tote. The third thing you're gonna to wanna to think about are your environmental factors. Now we are in upstate New York, beautiful upstate New York, and here we get snow. If you are someone who is going to raise pigs just from spring to fall though, you're not gonna to need to worry about a snow load for your pig shelter. But if you raise pigs year round like we do, then certainly snow load is going to be something that you need to think about if you are in an area where you get heavy snow. Now if you're in some place like Florida where you have hurricanes, then at that point, you're going to need to take that into consideration. If you're in a place like Alabama where you have tornadoes, then you're gonna to need to think about, about those things. Out west where maybe you get high winds, you need to think about that. Um, so just keep, keep in mind your environmental factors and the environmental factors that are going to impact you while you are raising the pigs. Finally, you're going to need to think about mobility issues. So are you going to be rotating your pigs from paddock to paddock or are they going to be in more of a static location? That's going to help you decide how you should build your pig shelters as well. So if you are moving pigs on pasture, how are you moving the shelters? Are you gonna be doing it manually or are you going to be using a tractor, an ATV, a UTV or something like that? That's going to help you determine how lightweight or how robust you can build your shelters. If you're keeping your pigs in a wood lot, but you're gonna be moving them around, you need to have your shelter collapsible. Uh, or is it going to be something that is just permanently in place and maybe you have several shelters around that area and you rotate your pigs from paddock to paddock? There's no right answer. It's just a matter of how you keep your pigs is going to help you determine how you should build your pig housing. Now we've been raising pigs here on our homestead for about five years, almost five years. And during that time, we've experimented with a number of different styles of housing. And in fact, we have six different types of housing here on our homestead. None of our pig shelters are the same. What I have found 
from experience and by observing what other people are doing on their farms is that pigs are not picky when it comes to housing. You don't have to worry about predator issues with pig housing like you do with poultry or rabbits or things of that nature. By and large, there aren't a lot of things that are going to bother pigs. Now that's not true in every case, in every area, I understand that. But for most people in most locations, predators are not an issue. And so you can be really, really creative with how you build your pig housing. So with the exception of the four things that I mentioned earlier, your type and breed of pig, the number of pigs you're raising, your environmental factors, and your mobility factors, you're really only limited by your creativity, the materials you have on hand, and what you, your wife, your husband, your, your spouse, your significant other, your code in enforcement officer, <laughs> what you're willing to put up with. But pig housing can really be built out of a lot of different things. And so today we're gonna to talk about six examples of pig housing that we have here on 3B Farm and Homestead, but certainly let your imagination run wild. <laughs> there are so many things that you can turn in to pig housing and hopefully this will simply give you a taste of what you can do and well, maybe what not to do as well. All right, let's talk about the first style of housing we have here on our farm. So the first style of housing that we have here on the farm is a repurposed dog house. This is something that a friend of mine was getting rid of and asked me if I'd be interested in it. And it has really worked out well for us. Now down in this area, we usually don't put bigger pigs. Um, this is not a very large dog house. And in fact, right now we have in here a sow and some piglets, and it's really, it's pushing the boundaries as far as whether or not um, it's big enough. Honestly, in a perfect world, I would not have her down here. The reason why I do is because this is also our quarantine area, and she had left our farm and gone to another farm and came back, and so I wanted her to be quarantined we really utilize this area for quarantine purposes as well as when I wean piglets, I'll bring them down here. So this house, because of its size, is going to work well for smaller pigs, a smaller number of pigs, um, maybe one good size uh, animal. It would not be a good place for me to put my boar, for example. He's just gonna be way too big. My larger sows wouldn't fit in here very well. So this is an example of where how you keep your pigs and the number of pigs, the size of the pigs, is going to dictate whether or not this housing would be uh, acceptable for them. But for a smaller sow and some piglets or weaning piglets, this size dog house is going to work very well. You can repurpose things like calf hutches or IBC totes. A lot of things like that can, suitably, can be suitable for pig housing, uh, it's just a matter, again, of that creativity. The next style of housing that we have is something that I built out of pallets. Now this is made out of three pallets and some plywood and some old roofing tin that I had laying around. And again, the size of this is such that maybe a small sow would fit in here uh, or a number of medium, small to medium sized pigs. But again, using pallets to build pig shelters and just because I built it out of three doesn't mean that you can't build a pig shelter out of more pallets. They really are the nice, a nice height for pigs, even larger pigs. So if you had a number of pallets, this one's down here is being all kind of talkative to me today. What's up? What's up? But it certainly would work well to build pig shelters out of pallets. I've seen many, many people do it. I just had some old tin laying around, I had some old uh, plywood laying around, and so I skinned the pallets with that, and it has worked out very, very well as a pig shelter. The next style of pig housing is an A-frame style pig house that we've built. And this is simply some two by fours that I had laying around, and on top of it is some old tin. And it simply looks like the roof off of a house, if you were to take a roof off of a house, and set it on the ground, that's what you have. 
And this works out well for our boar, and I've actually kept two large sows with him over the winter. I was um, trying to get some spring breeding in, in place. And so this comfortably is able to fit a large boar and two sows and still have room left over. This also is a great design for when you have a sow that is farrowing because the piglets can escape off to the side and kind of get away from the mom if they want to and not have to worry about being crushed. So this is a really good design, but again, it's just made out of some spare two by fours, two by sixes I had laying around and some old roofing tin that uh, I actually got from my brother when he moved. The last three types of housing that we have here on 3B Farm and Homestead utilize a very um, common and uh, readily available component, and that is cattle panels. And I have built three different shelters utilizing cattle panels in a variety of different configurations. You may recognize the one behind me. This is one that has shown up, I believe, on our Instagram uh, account. And this is actually an example of the $30 chicken tractor that uh, Doug and Stacy over at Off Grid with Doug and Stacy have designed. And we use this for meat birds, we've used it for turkeys, we, we've used it for ducks, and we utilize it for pigs. I really love this design because it is multifunctional, multi-purpose, and I love things like that. And we have successfully wintered over, I think it was seven or eight uh, small size pigs in this, in this uh, pig house. Um, and it worked very, very well. Now, it's not gonna work well for a number of large pigs. Uh, it might work well for maybe one large sow and piglets, but uh, it has been a very, very handy thing to have here on the farm because again, I can use it for meat chickens, I can use it for turkeys, I can use it for ducks, and I can use it for pigs. And all it is, is it is a cattle panel cut in half with a base that I think is four by eight or something like that. And so, and then it's covered with a tarp. And both end, one end is actually enclosed, the other end is open. Um, and then I have, a, a, when I have meat chickens in here, I have a section that goes over the, over the front of it. But uh, cattle panels are really, really handy to have for making pig shelters. This shelter is our summer shelter. This is not something that would handle a snow load very well. It's just two cattle panels hooped between some T-posts and then covered with a tarp. And there's nothing else that supports it whatsoever. So, so if we were to get quite a bit of snow, let me just show you, it's not very sturdy. It's not very, you can see it kind of wiggles quite a bit like that. And I'm kind of ruining their Sunday afternoon nap. But this definitely is a great summer shelter. I usually throw hay or straw underneath there. And uh, right now they've eaten it all up so they're down to the dirt. But uh, this works out very, very well. It's very simple, very portable. What do we got going on over here? Just a little bit of fighting over here. Um, <laughs> but uh, this works very well for a large number of pigs in a wood type setting. The final pig house that we have this is really what we use for our winter housing for the large group of pigs that we keep together and that is another style of hoop house uh, built with cattle panels now this was originally built to be a chicken tractor but what I did is I way overbuilt it instead of using two by fours on the base I used pressure treated two by sixes and let me tell you something folks this thing is heavier than a dead preacher it is a beast to move around. So I actually built two of them. One's here, one's right across the driveway there. That's our rabbit tree and our winter shelter for our chickens. And then this is our winter shelter for pigs. Now we use it all year round, to be honest. But uh, this is where we do keep them. I'll take that summer shelter that we were talking about just a little bit ago, and uh, I'll take that down. I actually don't take it down, I just take the tarp off. And then I move the pigs up here and let them have this as their winter home. And this is uh, uh, based on a chicken tractor design utilizing uh, um, cattle panels and then some um, framing 
that makes it be able to withstand uh, a snow load. Although during the snow, what I do is I just kind of knock the snow off to make sure that it doesn't get totally crushed. But it's simply cattle panels hooped inside. I think it's eight by 12. Don't hold me to that, but I think that's what it is. Eight by 12 with a tarp over the top of it. And then in the back, I have a tarp closing it off. And I also have uh, some boards back there just to secure it a little bit better. That's not normally in this design, but uh, works very, very well. And again, it's just utilizing cattle panels to uh, make that hoop design. So I hope you found this helpful. Again, we utilize whatever we have, whatever I have on hand, whether it's cattle panels or it is spare tin or it is pallets, um, whatever I can use to uh, build pig houses, I've been doing that. And it seems to work out very, very well. Again, in my opinion, besides taking into consideration those four factors we talked about at the beginning, you're simply limited by your creativity and what your wife or your husband or your significant other <laughs> or the code enforcement officer, what they might be willing to put up with. If you've got any questions about any of the pig houses that I've talked about, definitely feel free to reach out to me. My email address is brian at thehomesteadjourney.net. Got it right this week. Last week I gave the wrong email address, but the correct email address is brian at thehomesteadjourney.net. You can also find us on Instagram and on Facebook and, of course, on YouTube. So if you haven't already, subscribe or like or whatever the platform requires. And that way you will be notified anytime we provide any kind of an update as far as what's going on here on 3B Farm and Homestead. If you are interested in supporting the show, you can do so in a number of different ways. First of all, simply subscribe to our podcast or to our YouTube channel. That will help other people find our social media accounts. Also share the show with people that you think might find it helpful. Finally, you can support us by going to thehomesteadjourney.net slash shop. And there we have a list of affiliate links to products that we use here on our homestead. And if you buy through those affiliate links, a portion of that comes back to us and helps make this show possible. As always, the music on this show is provided by Audionautics.com, so a big shout out to them. And until next time, everybody, keep up the good work.